Emily Blunt. Yes. <laughs> uh, tell me, how did yes. Mary Poppins come about? Uh, how did you, who first called you? It's what, a great you question any, here. Yeah, um. thanks. And I asked it so eloquently, <laughs> I think, you know? Um, so, I had worked with Rob Marshall on Into the In Woods. Into the Woods, brilliantly. You're very sweet. And he was a friend and is now, obviously, still a friend. And um, he called me and left a very sort of charged voicemail on my phone. So I knew it was something quite big because it was so sort of ceremonious. He was like, Emily, it's Rob Marshall. you got to call me back. And so <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. So I called him and... Honestly, it really felt like he was building towards some kind of marriage proposal. Oh. It was so, had to, such an energy behind it. And, and then he just said, you know, the, the movie that Disney is like their prized possession and it's Mary Poppins. And I was filled with a feeling of complete thrill and fear. Right, of Because course. it's, I knew in that moment I was going to do it and I yeah. knew I really had my work cut out for me. Like it was a simultaneous sort of moment of... Yeah. You Fair said yes immediately. You immediately. just said 100. But just because he's so delightful, mm. and I knew he was going to know how to dig for the gold, and he was going to protect this legacy. Really, yeah. I mean, it is. It's that film that's sort of seared into your memory, right. and it's made such an imprint on people. I mean, I'm, do you remember seeing it as a kid? And like, I must have, but I don't. You were not really... a Mary Poppins fan. No, I don't. That's I don't. Funny. Why? I, I must have seen it at some point. Yeah. But I came in pretty fresh, I have to say. You did? Yeah. Did he know the direction he was going, that he was going to have original music, that all of that? Yes. That was, so you knew that? Yes, and I knew it was not going to be a remake, which I was so relieved about because I yeah. think, you know, nobody is going to ever be able to out Julie, Julie Andrews, you know, and so if I was trying to do those songs, and that would have been really tough, I think, because I I'm don't... doing one of those... Listen, don't undersell what you did. Look, there's, Julie Andrews is <laughs> unbelievable in every yes. single way. You are unbelievable in every single well, way. No, I mean sweet. it because the, it's also you go in as someone who knows musical theatre and movie musicals. Right. You go in like, hey, that's, that's a lot. You've taken on a lot. That's a big <laughs> part. Like that's a, and from the opening scene, you just go, ah. Oh, you're the best. And, and I think that feeling for an audience is that that's the hardest thing to achieve for to make an audience immediately just go particularly in a musical right just to be able to go oh yeah sing oh, dance I'm thank right God. in there but honestly you you did such a brilliant oh, job you're so sweet and it's not as you said it's not really about comparing but you are you're right up there you're in the same conversation <laughs> Right up there. I mean it. I'm so glad you liked it and that you've seen it because nobody has seen this film. Right. So we're all sort of sitting on this little treasure. I actually, not little, you I know. apologize. I took my daughter, who then you invited did. 10 people. Good for her. None of them paid. So yeah, there's a bunch of people. It's, a, it's so great. So we've missed out <laughs> yes, on Yes, there's a bunch. <laughs> but having that conversation before oh. with 13 year olds, with the, the executive from the studio, is like, no, you guys can't text or tweet or Instagram oh, really? and you just see their minds going, no, what do you mean what, I can't? Uh, yeah. uh, how, how do I communicate? What? <laughs> and, and Wait, I, I converse with her people? Her face was like, it? it's only six weeks and they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the, my favourite part, uh, I have a 13-year-old so you're nowhere near that stage. I know. Is it terrifying? Old, yes, because everything is not to 60 in three seconds in sure, every sure. single way and sure. she's grown up and literally looked down and go, oh, my God, it's like she's 16. Yeah. So when the movie started, and Friday, there was 10 of them, all 13 boys and girls, cool, this and so that, cool. popcorn, 10 in the morning. The movie starts and they oh all, and I, I, Deb, Deb, look, oh. all of them turn to about nine. Oh. And m almost all of the days them turning to 23, so it's so nice oh, that's to have so a moment of them turning nine. I think that's what I do love about it is that, rediscovery of childlike wonder and how yeah, yeah, important yeah. it is and how what it does to your soul right. when you watch a film like that that's just infused with so much joy and, and it shouldn't be underestimated right. just what an impact that can have on people I'm oh, seeing yeah. it when people watch it that it's such an uncynical yeah. hopeful film yeah. not trying to be cool it's not slick it's sort of definitely paying homage to the older films and yeah, but it it, it's just so beautiful seeing people react to it yeah, because, like, imagination is powerful. Yeah. And it's too easy to go, well, kids do that and then you grow up. Exactly. And the whole theme of 
actually hold on to that. Don't let that be. Yes, go. yes, Even exactly. Even as you grow up and go through this exactly. and break hearts and have your heart broken, it's like keep on to that. I don't know. For I sure. Was... You need to be more careful when the wind rises, George. You nearly lost your kite. And you two nearly lost your Georgie. He might have got away completely had I not been holding on to the other end of that string. My goodness, Annabelle, what have you done to your clothes? I just watched Greatest Showman this morning doing my research. Doing your homework. As you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Yeah, um, but it only came out a year ago. It's fine. No, it's only it's a really year ago. Fine. Listen, yeah. I've seen none of your work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was so gorgeous and so beautiful and... It's also well, uncynical, actually. Completely yeah. uncynical. Mm. And I did want to ask you about that and mm. how that came about. I know this is not the film we're talking about, but I just have to talk about it out of, out of interest. Mm. How long were you working on that? How long was it being developed for? Until Eight it years. It, was it really? Eight years. Because uh, someone, uh, Larry Mark, I, I did the Oscars, yeah. and he produced and he said, man, people know you as Wolverine, but they've just seen you. You should do a movie musical. You crushed the Oscars, by the oh, way. Thank you. Oh, epic. Thank you. That was a good one. It's always going in when expectations are low. You always <laughs> set yourself up. Exactly. Go, well, he's not that funny. I don't know. Like, yeah, Hugh Jackman. There you what? Go. Yeah. Oh. I know it's the best. It's <laughs> so, the best. Um, he said, "Let's do something." And from that moment to being the movie released was eight years. And of Ooh. course, the hardest thing, as you know, with this is the music. Because sure. there's that, I actually didn't hear this saying until after the movie came out, but my, my agent said to me, a, a musical works because of the book, but people love it because of the music. Yeah. So if you haven't got the music, obviously you're in real trouble. That's it. And we had these, so the, the studio said, let's have the writer of the day, the famous writer of the day to write songs. We'll have Five, we'll have Pharrell, we'll have Bruno Mars, we'll have a bunch of people and we'll have cool songs, we can play them on the radio, it'll be all of that stuff. And these young guys, Justin and Benj, somehow got through, wrote a song that was in our kind of first three and then all yeah. of a sudden they wrote another so they were two or five uh -huh. and by the end it was all their songs. But they, they were literally them. straight out of college. So oh getting God. them kind of sort of across the line with the studio, it just took us a while but... Oh, it was the songs are was, so extraordinary, yeah. and you know a great song when you hear it because you think you must have heard it before. It has such an immediate mm. um, impact on you that you feel that you've lived with it for a while. Yeah. And I was humming along with the song as it was happening. It was just, it was so beautiful. Yeah. I and, loved and, and it. These guys, also, dear Evan Hansen, they've oh, just God. done so much good stuff. But the studio, I have to say, you like this story. Yeah. When. The names they were expecting to hear were Pharrell Williams. There was yeah. Justin and Benj, and the studio execs came, who's this? Yeah. And our director said, well, they're massive on Broadway. You, don't you know about them? And the guy goes, no, no, no. What have they, what have they done? Yeah. He said, well, they just won a Tony Award. <laughs> and he said, oh, right. So, sorry, what, sorry. Yeah. what for? Yeah. Uh, for James and the Giant Peach. Right, there's never been a production of James and the Giant no, no, Peach. But the guy goes, oh. Awesome, okay. So we've got Justin yeah. Bench. <laughs> you just, no one wants, this is what I feel about Hollywood though. That's the classic. Nobody it. wants to be the first person to say yes. Everyone right. wants to be the second. Right. Like everyone's fine being like, as soon as there's some validation, they're like, right. they're amazing. <laughs> you know what, they're incredible. Anyways. I mean, don't you think you owe it to us to be forced? Oh, you. You're denying what we've seen with our own eyes. The only eyes. thing I deny is the idea that somehow you have the right to ask me these things. You're running for president. I'm aware of that, Tom. It's in the papers. Well, you have a responsibility. I know full well what my responsibilities are. Do you know yours? Yeah. So, Hugh, you are Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Yes. Sorry. That's all right. I got confused. I, you're this right. This is all about branding. Yeah, it's all. It's all... <laughs> this is a big opportunity for you. I Thank can tell you. that. Thank you. Um, uh, so, <laughs> when you're doing Broadway, are you nervous doing Broadway? Do you yeah. love it? Yes. Do you? Yes. What happens if your voice just cacks out? Right. So yes and yes and yes. <laughs> but I started in theatre, so in, in yes. a way, it's the place I feel most at home. Yes. So, and I've ha I've been on stage enough. There's kind of two types of people, and I'm guessing you're a little like me, whether you know it or not. That when something goes wrong, a piece of set doesn't come up someone gets sick yes. and someone new comes in, I, I love that. You love it. I kind of go, oh, Oof, this see, is I, great. I'll I be like, just let's, I'll go My on. palms just start to sweat, just right. even at the <laughs> so thought of it. maybe you're not. Maybe I'm not. But regardless, for me, it, it's such a great 
counterpart to doing film. Yeah. One, one makes you sharper for the other. And vocally, I was super nervous. Like when yeah. I did The Boy From Mars, I had 20 songs and it was eight shows a week. And I was like, I don't know if I can do it. I didn't mm. speak during the day for the first bit, poor Deb. Or maybe <laughs> good for Deb. You must have been really fun for Deb. Well, actually, I'm not really that much fun. But Deb, is right. that true? She, Deb, am I fun? Deb, I'm not fun. Deb, is he lame? Deb <laughs> makes her own fun, you know that. Deb. Yeah, love Deb. So uh, I wouldn't go out afterwards. I'd sleep in. I yeah. had no coffee for a year because someone told me you that dehydrates you. And I thought, it okay. does, I think. Right, so I did anything. And then what you realise, particularly in Broadway, you have so many people who will help you get through that show. Like, That's right. If you get a sore throat, yeah. if you're in London, the doctor says, let it run its course, take a few shows off. Yeah, yeah. In America, they're like, Steroid shot. Hands down. <laughs> let's go. See you later. And, and does it and work will get when you, you get a steroid that. shot? Yeah. You can't do it forever. But, yeah, I, 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 I got through shows that I never thought I'd, really? I'd get through. See, yeah. I've done plays and I loved it. Which my play did you do? I did um, The Royal Family was my first oh. job. I was 18. And then I did Vincent in Brixton, which was a play at the National about uh, Vincent van Gogh. Right. And then I did Romeo and Juliet. Playing, playing the nurse. Who do you ah. think? <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> so, and what about a musical? Well, that's the you thing I haven't me, done. On. Do you know what my worst nightmare is? What? Of singing and having that moment where your voice goes ah, or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> like my worst nightmare of my voice just like breaking at the wrong moment. Right, because it will I mean? do that occasionally. It will. Yeah, but... I just, I've never had trained... So are you a trained singer? Because no, I'm not I, a like, trained like So I was a trained singer. actor and okay. I got singing... Like, it was in my contract when I did Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. My contracts gave me one singing lesson. I had to have that's a singing it. lesson every week. Oh, yeah, OK, yeah. So I kind of got through it. I got better and better and that's when I got lessons. So I've been yeah. learning on the job. Me too. So I it took me a long time to feel confident. Yeah. But actually... It does help when you have those lessons. You just suddenly yeah. have something to grab a hold of. And doing of. eight shows a week. Yeah. Gives you that confidence. For sure. Because actually you will occasionally, occasionally the song, but predominantly 99% of the time it's totally fine. Shall we do a musical? You're going to do it. I, I'm in. I'm totally I'm in. I'm in now. Because Steroid shots. You, I'm going to do what it. What would you do? Do you have any idea? Do you think, ah, oh, that show. I want to do The King and I, but you can't do that with me. Yeah, that's going to be tough. <laughs> that's, that's not an easy one for me. That's inappropriate. But you should do that. Um... I think that's so beautiful. I yeah. was obsessed with that film as a kid. Really? Completely obsessed, yeah. Shall we dance? I think you should do it, and then you just, you, you will feel totally, you, you will be great. All right, Dan. You have a beautiful voice. You're very You're a nice. great Dan. No, you really have a beautiful voice. <laughs> so the, you'll be able to do it, and you're a great actor. You've done theatre. I've done theatre. I've done some of it before. Let me ask you another question. Go on, then. Would you be fine? Yeah. I'm going to say 15, 20 years from now going, yeah, never did that musical. Or is part of you like, I want to do a stage musical? Um, I, I don't have that inkling, actually. Uh. I do want to do a play again. I feel yeah. like I need to get back on the stage at some point and do yeah. something. So maybe we'll do that. Sing and sings, we can't do the King and I. Right. <laughs> yeah, I would. I mean, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I have the guts to do a... Stage musical yet. Fair enough. Yeah. First of all, how amazing is it that we're living in this time where movie musicals are literally Happening. like, oh, it's so obvious. I remember, uh, I remember when Greatest Showman came out and it started to do well. We go, well, yeah. of course, you release a musical at Christmas, it's going to work. And I'm like, but that hasn't happened in forever. Forever. Yeah. What, what do you think makes a great movie musical? I mean, look, I think this is something that Rob Marshall would just speak so much more eloquently about, mm. but. I think in order to create, a, I think it's a very difficult balance between a story and a narrative that is moving and profound that people can get on board with. You do want the idea of a spectacle mm. so that people can be pulled into a world that they want to breathe the same air as, a world that's completely yeah. uh, sort of out there from yeah. reality. Yeah. But then you want the songs and the scenes to sort of have a seamless feel so that it's right. not this quality of like, and here's a song, you totally. know. I think musicals, if they are done poorly, it's almost like it's funny when people start singing. Totally. You're like, ooh, it like makes you cringe. Yeah. You want it to be 
that you don't even notice. Yeah. I think, you know, and I think that's the tricky balance of. I agree. You know, I often, what do you feel? Well, I always, when people say to me of musicals, I go, did you like Grease? And they'll go, yeah, it was a cool movie. And I go, look at the story of Grease and the songs, right? It's, yeah. That's a hard thing to pull off, but watch yeah. Travolta from the scene with Olivia Newton-John in the drive-in, oh, right? Oh, yeah. The little, 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 little argument, she's, you're terrible, Danny you know, walks off. Yeah, yeah. And he then has to walk. Oh. Strand of the drive-in, looking so like a fool. And you think, that's not an easy no, transition to pull off. But you don't feel it. Ever. Yeah. And I, I was lucky enough to do a, a film with John, and he says, you just have to commit to it so, so hard. hard. And in the theatre, there's something of the form of yes. theatre. There's something about we're all sitting there. There, the, yeah. there's the orchestra in the pit. Yeah. The band strikes up. We go along with it. Yeah. But you have to make those transitions work. And I know that for Les Mis, you did all live singing, right. which is extraordinary yeah. and such a huge undertaking for you guys. And it was really remarkable yeah. watching it. And I know that what Rob, Rob Marshall likes to do the two times I've worked with him is you do the pre-record. Yeah. So you've got this perfect version of the yeah. song uh, right before we start shooting. And then on the day you sing a few live. Yeah. And he just sort of combines the two so that there's not that sort of eggy transition. Of oh, right. Going from a kind of gritty scene yeah. into something that sounds so orchestrated and perfect. So usually ah, the beginning of every song. Yeah, it sounds was, live to me. It just sort of blends. He sort right. of blends the two. And have you got a little earwig? I do. And so is someone, have you listened to a track or is someone? So there's, there's a track that I sing along with myself. Right. You know, but it is that awful moment on set where you sing along to the, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. No one, when no you sing along hear what you're to, hearing. oh. <laughs> It's so embarrassing. And you sing along to the pre-recorded version. It's blaring from the speakers and it's just everyone feels it. And then there's that hideous moment where Rob goes, OK, so we're going to do one live. And you <laughs> hand it like a tiny earwig and you just sing a cappella, you know, and no one can hear what you're. Is that how you guys did it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and we had a live uh, pianist because. You did? Yeah, some things were to track. Like one day with the big orchestral numbers where other people were singing, but all those sort of soliloquies, empty chairs, empty tables, or yeah. I dreamed a dream, or, you know, all of that was live. So we had a guy sitting over there in a perspex kind of cube. So oh. we couldn't, because we were hearing the pedal and the keys. So. They had to put him in, a, and he's watching the monitor and just going with our breath. So <gasps> it was kind of like you, that way you could just act it. But in Lamez is different and there's no speaking hardly. It's hardly, hardly it's anything. all sung That's through. Right. So you, That's right. That helps with that. Yeah. It doesn't help if you're not into singing on sure, film. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> As an audience member, but it helps with the transition. Sure. You were saying to me just before we came on, like John was saying, wow, you know, we thought we were making this art house movie, sure. which has just gone and been this incredible huge hit. To me, that's, it's my favorite type of story because it is a beautiful movie with a, obviously a very smart, clever idea, something new and fresh to the whole genre. Sure. But it's really about family. Totally. And it's totally about struggle, that struggle to keep a family together. That's it. And I have, there's the moment when I was watching that, where I literally covered, and you know, I think you know the moment I'm talking about, where we all know you're going to put your foot through the nail. <laughs> you're, you've got having contract, your water's broken, you're having contractions, yeah. you can't make a sound, and we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, actually, for 15 minutes, you're I was like, nervous no, about no, that no, nail. Does it, it, it feel like, like 15 minutes? Yeah, I think that. He lays it, it in By so the way, it, it is about 15 minutes. Yeah. I, and I'm just the whole time, yeah. and I just went, oh, oh, yeah, what it is. <laughs> This is going to be yeah. too long and it's a little bit of a non sequitur and I'm happy to stay longer just to get this in. When I was at drama school, there yeah. was a, a famous Stanislavski acting exercise called the Bearer Bonds. Did you, What's do you know that? about it? So you have to imagine this is the scene and he made every acting student do it. Okay. About how to make emotion real. Okay. You're, you work at the bank. So I'm at the bank. Uh, my, something... My boss says, I need you to take all these bonds home. So imagine you've got $5 million of cash and I need you to take care of it. And I, you say, I don't want to take care of it. He says, you don't. And if you do this well, you'll get promoted. So you're carrying home all this cash and you're going to get a promotion. Uh -huh. You come home to your wife and child and you put down the, 
the bag with the money and you go in to bath the child and the child's in the bath and all of a sudden you hear a screech and you realise somehow the money is caught on fire in the other room. So somehow the bonds, the $5 million cash is on fire. You race out and while you're racing out to get the money, your child drowns. So he tried to come up with the most extreme kind of, in a way, ridiculous, it impossible emotional situation and how to cope with it. And then he would say, go. Mm. And then he would say, right, you would do it. And then he would say, you now have six months to prepare. And he would say, oh, you need to build out the life of these characters and then mm. I want you to perform it. When I watched that scene, how the hell are you going to cut all this? I have no idea. But <laughs> when I watched that scene, I thought, oh, this is the bearer bonds for the 21st really? century. Okay, you're not allowed, to, if you make a noise, sure. you and your entire family are gonna die. Sure. You're about to give birth, your yeah. water's broken, you're terrified, and as you walk down the stairs, you put your foot through yeah, a six yeah. inch nail. Yeah. Go. Just all extremes. Everything yeah. that you went through, you're, as a character, was so brilliant. It was so brilliantly done. Stanislavski would have said, yes. He would have. You will work in the Russian theatre. You will be in the Russian theatre. You shall theater. be in it. It was so amazing. Thank you. I mean, when you read that in the script, yeah. are you like, oh my that's God. a lot, John. I like, mean, John, can we just... He pitched me it before I read scene. it. Yeah, the whole sequence. Right. So I knew it was going to be a beast you know, to, yeah. to shoot that. And then he said, like, do you want to shoot it sporadically because it's uh. a, such a mammoth under, undertaking? Do you want to shoot it all over five days from the water breaking till the moment the baby comes out in the right. bathtub? Right. Like, what do you want to do? And I said, all is one. I said, we got to track it and the through line of it. And, and you know. can I ask where you're yeah. at with your own personal life, baby-wise? Like so um, my little one was... Uh, just, it was about one and a half. Right. Yeah, when we when shot you it. Showed that. So, you know, it, it, it was a terribly challenging scene, but it was so exciting as well because right. it was so freeing because actually of all the scenes and sequences in the movie, because John is so spontaneous when he works, that was the one because he knew it, what it would take out of me to shoot it, where he was like, this is what I, this is this shot, this is gonna be this shot, I need two takes of this, I need this, this and this. Like it was so laid out so I could have a lot of freedom within it because I knew he wasn't gonna exhaust me, you know, it was so perfect. Did he push you at times? Um, I think he probably, when it comes to giving birth, was like, what do I have? <laughs> he was like, I think because I have given birth twice, I think right. he was like, this is, this is your department. Have you, know? you ever, Given birth silently. before, before, <laughs> be silently with a f- nail in your foot. Yeah. No, before. Have you done that on film before? No. Never. Never. Right. And I also didn't have those types of births where the baby comes really quick. Ah. So I watched um, on YouTube very intense, fast deliveries. Really. Just to kind of get an intro. Out of the forty-five minute deliveries, you know, where the baby, where they go into labour, the baby's out. You know. Right. I will show you a video, I'm going yeah. to send you a video, okay. of a woman having a baby in the car on the way to the hospital. Right. It is horrifying. Right. It's so intense. So I watch that a lot. I bet. Uh, there was another question I had about yeah. that. Uh, do you watch now having given birth? Yeah. Are you really judgy when you watch actors <laughs> doing birth scenes? You're like, no. I mean, some people nail it. Right. But it's usually people who have given birth. Got it. You know. Right. Yeah. So when you do your scene... Give me a call. I'll give you some pointers. I love it. Well, you've sent me the video. (laughs) I've got it down pat. When you give birth in a car. (laughs) Hugh Jackman, when you did your birthing scene in the front one. Right. um, I gave birth to that wig. Yeah, to that wig. Yes. No, it was a fantastic wig. He was known for his hair. Was he? I mean, it was that era, I suppose, 80s. Because that's what they talk about he had such in the beginning. Hair. And they he were saying that's hair. at least a few votes, oh, right. just with that's the hair. Be three you know, just the hair alone is going to be three points. Uh, yeah. um, I want to ask you about that film, because it is really extraordinary. And the conflict, the sort of moral conflict, mm. I just love films like that, mm. that make you question yourself in that position. Mm. And I wanted to ask you, when you took it on, were you, what was your own personal feelings towards this character and 
How much did you empathize with it, with him? How much did you sort of disassociate what how how you would behave in that scenario? Yeah. And I, not knowing much about it. Yeah. But I before I read it, my agent happened to be a political science major, so he gave me a little bit of right. a background. And he's often described as the great president America never had. I was like, oh, yes. why is that? So I found out a little bit about who he was and the kind of person he was. So I went in probably reading it a little biased, mm -hmm. thinking it feels to me like we somehow have remembered these three weeks and this candidacy is a bit of a joke. He's mm -hmm. like become a meme, really, mm -hmm. you know. But there's clearly a lot more to it and perhaps we've, you know, thrown the baby out with the bathwater. Sure. So I was going in with that. The more I got to know him, uh, spend time with him, get to know the people who worked with him. Yeah. I empathized a lot more and thankfully, and I did question myself a lot about this, I, the movie is not about did he or didn't he have an exactly. effect. It's, it's not at all. It's like, okay, if he did, is that relevant? If sure. he didn't, is, is it relevant? What is the relevance, yeah. Is that actually important or is yes. it just interesting? There's a line from yeah. one of his speeches, you know. Yeah. So I found myself therefore not answering that question in my head yeah. as an actor, which is what everything they tell you not to do. Mm -mm -mm. I, it, I kept going like, how does that help me as yeah. an actor? Because what I realized, what I'd assumed is all these political campaigns seem so slick, so particularly slick. coming from Australia and England. For sure. You see those conventions and you're like, oh wow, they're it's all so, so slick intense. and there's money yeah. and there must be millions of people, but it's yeah. just chaos. Sure. And everyone's flying by the seat of their sure. pants. And if you bring in the fact it's early 80s with the first satellite TV, yeah. CNN is just beginning, there's a voracious appetite for news and yes. everyone is just, the ground was shifting under their feet yeah. and everyone was making mistakes and no one knew how to handle how, situations. How, how to cover so it. So you had the next president probably of the United States in an alleyway with three journalists right. at two o'clock in the morning. Right, I loved that scene. Yeah, and no one knew what the hell to do. Like, they're like, ah. Oh. Yes. You have a journalist saying to a candidate, have you ever committed adultery? And no one in history had ever asked that question. So you feel every other journalist go, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the candidate go, what? What do I do? Yeah. So oh, now, I think it course, was, it was the chaos of it. Yeah. And the inability and, to bring order to that chaos in this moment of crisis for this right. candidate. It was just, it gave me anxiety watching it. And yeah. there was a line at the end, it is from one of his speeches, it's the speech that you give at the end when, when he talks about how maybe there are some of the best men in the country mm. who are never gonna subject themselves to this circus. Yeah. I can't remember what the we, line is exactly. Yeah, we're basically losing. Who we're, have we lost? Who, who have we lost because of the circus of the media? Right. We're not talking about that right now. I right am now. talking no, no, no. about that. We're talking about how you get through today without pissing away everything we've all worked for on this Bill, campaign. Bill, this campaign is about the future, not rumors, not sleaze, and I care about the sanctity of this process. When you met Gary Hart... Yeah, before shooting The Front Runner, yeah. I... Um, <laughs> it was really amazing because he didn't read the script for obvious reasons. He was sort of like... Interesting. I don't want to be in a position where I'm either like, no, yes, I hate it, I love it. Uh-huh. Just... You should go and make your movie, uh -huh. but it's based on a book by Matt By, and Matt had spent a lot of time with him, so he very graciously offered me to come up and spend time with him. And I wanted to meet him mainly because I wanted to look him in the eye and say, I, I'm taking this really seriously. And yes, I know absolutely. You're a family man who's intensely private, and I can't imagine how hard it is mm. for all this to come up again. Mm. I can't imagine how hard it, those three weeks were for you, and yeah. I just want you to know I'm... I'm taking it seriously, you know, and I take you seriously and I do believe our stories in life are probably the most precious thing we own. Yeah, so, yeah. And also just to find out what it's like to be with him, of yeah. course, as an actor and I How met him. How did you feel about the film being made? He was really a little confused. He was really surprised. Was he? And he was sweetly a very big Les Mis fan. He's like, I can't believe you <laughs> said yes to this, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think it's been 30 years since then, and I think he was really surprised it's become something. You know, something that someone would want to make a movie about. He met me at the airport, and he actually ran McGovern's campaign. So uh, he's one of the only candidates who actually ran a campaign before. So 
all our emails together were kind of so sweet. What do you like to drink? This is what we're going to do. We're going to wake up around here. We'll have breakfast. We'll do this talk. We'll go for a walk. It was like wow. everything was organized. Wow. And he said, I'll pick you up. And he was there curbside to meet me with the trunk of, the, of his car open. And he shook my hand. I'll never forget. I'm going to do it to you. Sorry if this is awkward. But it's not orcs. We've just taken orcs. pictures together. It's, it's right. through very <laughs> orcs pictures. He shook my hand and then he put his other hand there. And he just looked like that. And I just went, Oh, melt. Yeah, I was just like, oh, and it was kind of like, oh, to this put is going to be okay. As well and just, totally. Yeah, he yeah. was like, it's yeah. going to be okay. Yeah. And I'd heard stories from people that he In was. In that moment, did you think, I'm going to have an affair with Gary Hart? <laughs> just. <laughs> Momentarily, like. It just went through. You You're were right, like, because... I really understand it. Now, now I feel it. Yeah. Just the caress. Was... <laughs> and so lovely and so warm. And then when we went to his house, Lee, his wife, he was most nervous about how Lee was going to be portrayed. Okay, okay. Because it's really true what's in the film. He's intensely private and protective of his family. And a lot of people assume the scandal made him go. He opted to leave. Oh. He voluntarily left yeah. politics forever. Three months after he left, he was still polling at 40%. And the nearest rival was 16%. And they were saying, please come back. Everyone when he goes... No, I refuse really? to submit my family and friends to this level of gossip and sleaze and rumour. I'm not going to do it. Anyway, Lee, his wife, had just had hip surgery. I don't think she might be, you know, mm. it was elective hip surgery. Mm. He, they were sleeping downstairs on the fold-out sofa and he said, you'll sleep upstairs. I was like, oh. So we go upstairs and I'm clearly walking into the master bedroom. You're in their room. I said, Gary, oh. I can sleep. He goes, no, no, this is the best room and you'll sleep here. And then he just cleared a little bit of space in his cupboard. He goes, you can put your clothes here. Oh, so my goodness. It was like, <laughs> as an actor, it was so immersive. And then he yes. made me not one, but more than one of the meanest martinis. Really? And we, yeah. And then that first night we were whiskey, cigars. So good. Till like 11 o'clock at night. And we're friends to this day. That is I, so all-consuming and yeah. must have been surreal. But it made me, I, was, I knew he was going to see the movie. Yeah. What did he think? He was so happy with Vera's performance. Oh, good. The first thing he said to me. Good. He was very complimentary to me, but he's a gentleman. He would have been even if it's he hated it. It's because you're well, fantastic in thank it. Thank you. But he... Um, and then he had some other comments about the movie that I just don't feel I can share. Like, yeah, yeah. That's fair. He's one of those people that every time I say something... Actually, I rang him the other day. I said... I feel like saying this in an interview. And he said, Hugh, he goes, I'm much stronger than you think. You can say anything I said to you up there, you can Interesting. say. Interesting. But uh, he's just a private person. Do you think in some Running ways... Running the most public job in the world. I mean, that's what's so surreal. Because he, be he really believed, he really had ideas, you know. But he also probably really believed that his private life was nothing to do with it. I mean, you, you, you right. can see that he believed that with everything he had. He did. With such he... conviction. So he was almost confused why that would matter. He you know, really you see, And that. the way you portrayed it was so clever, that complete, like, bafflement of the whole thing. And yeah. And by the way... Why, why does that bear any weight on and my campaign? And 65% of the people in a poll, when all this was happening, said the press had gone too far. So oh, he wow. kind of had... It was understandable that he believed it. Sure. But the train had left the station. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the press had gone. changed forever, you know. Do you think... Was that one of the first... Big, did that sort of set the template for how things move forward? And you know, when when that when when the character we have a composite character, AJ played by Marmaduke, when he says, "Have you ever committed adultery?" Yeah, and there is just silence. God, that, scene was so that is like the question that broke the internet. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Before the internet, mm -hmm, it was. Mm -hmm. And now, if you think it's it's just anything. Oh, it's very conversational. Yeah, everything yeah, yeah. is anything can be anything brought goes. out there. Sure. But that was the first. It was so almost so inappropriate. How do you find it? Well, we like, both live in famous. New York. <laughs> you and are. don't you find that New Yorkers are much cooler? Much. And they give you space and there's a sort of acknowledgement. And since moving to Brooklyn, John and I, I think have been asked for one picture. Really? But people walk past you and they go, oh, that's, you know, so and so. Or yeah. Like, oh, you know, or people say, I love the movie or it's like something right. like that. And then they keep going. Because I'm usually walking with my kids and right, there's yeah. a sort of acknowledgement of that it's not the right time. And maybe it's because it's such a fast moving, busy city that... I don't know, there's a sort of respect. No, I, I, do you I, find that I, where I you are? I sense that as well. Or do, do you find where you are 
in the city that it's more frenetic? Because I find Brooklyn is like, it's so yeah, kind of utopian, that, but, you right. know, that people are pretty I think chilled, it is a little you know? more chill there. Yeah. And you also don't get as many tourists sort of yes, going around yes. there. And do you get paparazzi around there? No, but when we lived in Tribeca, we did. Right. We do we, get a We lot, get them yeah. occasionally, but not them. I yeah. mean, my picture doesn't sell a lot. Like, I think the paparazzi, it's way better to be dating, breaking yes, up, yes. partying, yeah. that kind of thing. It, Deb's not been together 23 years. It's yeah. really not selling a lot, that photo. <laughs> They're just like, oh, yeah. oh, great, it's you walking yeah, down the street. Yeah, it's you guys again yeah. looking solid, you know. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but you, about something is about to change for you. Let me just ask Go this. On. Because with Mary Poppins, and I just experienced it with Greatest Showman in the last year, that's going to change. Yes. And I, I don't know about you. I can say no to an adult. I can say to an adult. It's hard with a kid. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm I just with, with my, my family. Kid, yeah. And they almost always like, oh, yeah, that's, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. But with... Anything to line up to about 10 or 11. Yeah. I just think that's going to be a different thing for me because my whole rule is when I am with my children, I say, do you know what? I won't take a picture, but I'd love to shake your hand. And yeah. people usually then see that your kids are there. It's like, it's like yeah. all they see is you for a second. Right. And then they suddenly see your situation. Right. And then they go, oh, God, of course, I'm so sorry. Um, but I do feel it's different with kids. I also adore kids and yeah. I love meeting them. Yeah. And I think... And you, they're it's going to be a tricky like, balance. Yeah, you know? because they're going to see Mary Poppins. Well, the good news is I don't. I look very different as Mary Poppins, so I do feel I can blend in a bit. You're an right. enormous person, so how you <laughs> blend in, I don't know. Like, John is an enormous person. Like, right. he doesn't have a prayer. Right. So he, you know, the subway's become pretty impossible. For, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But when you walk around with your umbrella. But when I walk around with Paris. my umbrella <laughs> and my carpet bag. And the great um, turnout. <laughs> I do have a question about that. What? How conscious were you as you're being lifted? Is that an iconic image of the turnout the and the turn feet out. up? Yeah, the feet up. So you concentrating is, on toes well, up? Well, because it's it's on the front of all the books as right. well. So it's 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 so, turn out but toes up. That's like yeah. impressive, right? Were you a ballet dancer? No. Oh. So not. Because <laughs> so you danced not. up a storm. Thanks. Did you have to you. do a lot? We did. It was it was day one of rehearsals. Right. I was handed a hat and a cane. And right. I thought, oh my god. And is Rob one of those like uh, I was always a little embarrassed because not being a trained dancer but being in musicals. Yes. They yell at the dancers and they're like, I hear you doing great. Just maybe you know don't fall yeah. over on that one. Uh, did you get that <laughs> or is Rob like? No. Come on. Rob, not at all. Rob is he expects so much of you. Right. But because he's so charismatic and so charming, you you can't bear to let him down. So I drilled that dancing till I was blue in the face. Really? I was like, I am gonna get this down for him. The one thing I cannot do is turn. Oh, I really? can't do a turn to save my life. Really? Like, Rob thinks it's really funny. So did he choreograph it out? Oh, there's one turn in it, and it right. was about six different cuts right. to get me <laughs> like 360. <laughs> it's embarrassing how oh. bad I, so that's the one thing. You did a couple of spins in Greatest Showman, didn't you? I can do a couple of spins. You can do a couple I of spins. I can only go one direction though. That's it? So they choreograph it for me. And they'd choreograph the entire thing turning right, the, the really? whole cast. And I, after about, I was like, I can do that, I can do that. And yeah. Ash, after about three, said, all right, can you all you guys turn left? And of course, they went <laughs> left. I was like, Thanks. You're like, great. I actually met Julie Andrews did at you? a royal command performance. One of those oh ones that I, I did back For the Queen? in 1998. For yeah. the Queen of England? Yeah. And oh, yes, I yes. was a little starstruck, I'm going to be yeah, honest. Of course. They clearly you met her, right? I've met her, I met her years ago at some event, I can't remember. It was like L Women in Film, one of those. And she was so charming and so lovely. Little did I know years later that I would be offered Mary Poppins. Right. But um, Rob Marshall is very close with her. She was incredibly supportive of me playing the part and excited for me to do it. And I think she's been a big big supporter of this, you know, really? that believes in the next chapter of this character. She also knows there's seven other books and... Was it unnerving for you? Like when you're recording and you look yeah. over in the corner, she's standing there, was that no. weird or...? <laughs> she wasn't there. No, in the background, <laughs> just always, no. Yeah, she's there like so with her super, perfect soprano voice. She was super um, cool. She was cool, she was very hands off with the whole thing. Yeah, you know? I get that. Because yeah. what, she would be worried about raining on your parade. I think so. Yeah. I, I think so. And there was a discussion about, you know, maybe that she would come and yeah. do a bit in the movie. And mm. and she was so generous, actually. She said to Rob, do you know what? This is, 
this is Emily's version of her and I don't want it to be that she's playing Mary Poppins the whole way through but then I come in and there's like oh but there's there's a real Mary Poppins you know right. she she didn't want that for me which I thought was incredibly gracious and yeah. generous hearted yeah. actually yeah. um I think she'll come to the I hope she'll come to the premiere how did you feel after you saw it I sort of scream cried after watching did it you? it was completely overwhelming and I'm really not one of these people that's like you should see my movie. Like I've never been, I, I, it, it is still quite tricky to watch stuff that you do. I tend to kind of pick it apart a bit and, but I watched it completely alone and I was so proud to be in it. Yeah. Just floored by I'm it. so thrilled you felt that way because you should feel that way. I and just it, loved it. And knowing how hard it is to pull that stuff off and you and Rob and everyone, Lynn, you make it look really effortless, like, oh, oh it's you. a Sunday afternoon, everyone's just doing it, and, and it's not, and it's, yeah. you should be proud of it. It was, it was definitely, it took over my life for like a year and a half, almost two years, from when I got the call, and then I started rehearsing the songs, and I had a baby, and then started yeah. rehearsing. Yeah.